Hi, this is Michelle Gurayman, uh, women's wellness coach, and you have reached MGTV. And this year, 2014, it's so amazing we're in 2014, um, is a year where I will actually do weekly video um, starting this week. So I have a team around me helping me to do it. So look forward to some awesome videos really getting into what's going on with you as far as health, giving you great tips for health, and helping you make sense of it. Now, I have a lot of information to be in this head, and as you can see, a lot of information in this bookshelf, but it really is easier for me to answer your questions. So this year, I'm going to encourage you to actually send me your questions, either write them in the comments below, message me through YouTube, uh, if you're watching this on my website, go to my contact page and put in your questions, but ask me some questions that I can answer in these videos just to make sure that you are getting the information that you need and I'm just not talking, talking, talking about stuff that's really good, but it may not be helping you where you need to go. So today, I am especially going to be talking about health resolutions because New Year's is for everybody a time to kind of reflect on the year before and to really look forward to what's going to come. And honestly, for me, there's a couple different times in the year that I use to do the same type of things. New Year, um, you know, December coming to January is a good time. I like to like reconnect with people that I might have talked to in a while, um, obviously plan things for my business. But also to really think of what do I want this next year to bring for me? What do I want to put into it? Um, my birthday is another time that that's really important to me. Um, my birthday is in May, so it's about five months into the year where I get to look back at like, am I accomplishing nearly anything that I plan to? And really, again, to kind of course correct my goals. September is another really uh, pivotal part of the year for me. Um, that's probably just the years and years and years ingrained in me from schooling, but I always um, in September do quite the same thing. So this video is really going to be helpful for each of these times in the year when you're looking back at what happened and really planning forward, especially when it comes to health resolutions. Now, if you have, um, you know, you're already thinking in your head, I do not want to make a health resolution or I hate health resolutions or I never do them. I am going to spend some time in this video talking about why it's important and why maybe in the past you failed and why you can actually do better today. And I'm also going to give you some examples of some really good health resolutions that you may want to make in 2014. Now, first of all, um, you know, one of my favorite quotes, I actually love to teach goal planning. Um, I'm kind of a teacher at heart, so I love to teach in general, but Goal planning is something that I learned when I was in high school and was really, really um, kind of phenomenal for me. And what I learned in high school, um, in one particular class I can remember, we, we did communications, that I kind of translated and kept going with into university. Now, I tell you right now, I didn't do it nearly as well as I'm doing it now, but I say that to say this. Goal planning and being successful at planning goals and achieving goals is not inherent. You're not born with it. It doesn't happen by osmosis as you're a child. It's something that is learned. It's something that you need to actually be taught. And it's something you need to practice over and over again to actually make perfect. So I think when I talk to um, quite a few women and they get into like, you know, I've actually been hired to run workshops for women to teach them goal planning or life planning that they are really apprehensive at the beginning and I really need to remind them this is new information so it's going to take time to actually put into practice but it's not something that you should have thought that you should already know. Um, it's just it doesn't work like that. So for anybody watching this video if you've done resolutions before that have failed or if you try to plan before or you just kind of given up on planning um, if that's the reason why I just want you to like take a deep breath fresh new start, things are going to be different. Uh, one of my clients, and not many of my clients are, but there's a few that are kind of more free-spirited and <laughs> um, kind of fly by the seat of your plans and never planning. Um, one of my clients, when I actually taught her some aspects of goal planning that I thought would be helpful in her life, 
was able to actually be able to see how having a plan allowed her the space to really live by the, her own rules and to kind of be, you know, um, how should I say it? Whimsical and, you know, kind of, I mean, she rides horseback and like, you know, kind of just jump on your horse and take a weekend away to be able to do that fully without that worry of, am I going to make enough money? Uh, you know, I do I have things to do. Am I going to get things done? Because there was this change when you have only yourself to think of and when you start to have other responsibilities to take care of other people or business or job or husbands or wives or whatever. So when you're kind of moving into a new part of your life, you're going to need new tools to be able to do that properly. And so really taking aspects of goal planning allowed her to have times where she could just pick up and leave because she knew that everything that needed to be in place was in place. And so one thing about goal planning, especially for those types of people, is it really helps you to get a little bit more structure that allows you to really enjoy those times when you don't have structure and not to really worry about other things. For the other type of lady out there that is a little bit more like me and will plan to oblivion and never take action, this video is going to be helpful because it's going to be more action oriented. So I definitely have a habit of planning and loving to plan and when it comes to putting things in action, really not doing it as well as I could. And I actually took a course um, in December on goal planning um, for my own personal business and to really, you know, up my skills a little bit. But one thing that I learned from that course that I think is really helpful that I'm going to be definitely translating to my clients is picking three objectives per quarter because it definitely is in my um, idea to plan 11 things to do in the year <laughs> and then try to fit them all into six months. So really to plan and to really have time to put those things into action and actually have that deepening of understanding, um, pr productivity, development of really what I want um, to be a lot more steady. So as a woman, entrepreneur, wants to be healthy, wants to live an amazing life, wants to really uh, enjoy 2014 and knows that I have some really, really um, profound responsibilities for my own soul, for others around me. I need to make sure that I do have those times to kind of get away and relax, but I am really working towards something. Uh, a, a quote that I always talk about uh, when it comes to planning is, is, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Not having some kind of plan really allows you to go anywhere and really fail because you don't really know what's going to come up. And I don't want to get into all the details of what I actually teach. I actually teach 10 steps when it comes to goal planning, but I do want to talk about resolutions. Now, one of the reasons I think people don't do resolutions and I stopped doing resolutions is because by this time, I've already failed them all. And that guilt keeps me into this kind of downward spiral for the rest of the year. And so I waited to do this video to make sure that if you have done a resolution and already failed, or you haven't done one that you can start now. Now, I stopped calling them resolutions and I started calling them intentions. And uh, one of the reasons is because for a lot of people, there's just this heavy word with resolutions, like I just told you, I'd fail, usually in the first week. And so I, I needed a new word to kind of deal with. Now that I'm doing better with the intentions, I kind of have gone back to calling them resolutions and being really happy about them. But for you, one of the things that made it different was, I actually watched the video, I can't remember what video it was, and if you do know the video, I would love to give credit to this person, that the reason that we do not actually follow through in our resolutions is because we are not a different person than the last year. And we've decided to do something different, but we have no different habit or strategy to get us there. And so by adding that one more piece of giving yourself a strategy, and obviously with clients, my other piece that I like to teach is to add a support aspect but to just add that one piece of strategy is really important so the resolution is really the decision that you're making of what you want to accomplish the strategy is the commitment that you're making to actually do those actions so it's not a commitment that you make to the intention or the resolution is a commitment that you make to the strategy that's important then the support piece is to make sure you get support in following through on that strategy. So for example, um, with a resolution, and let me give you some ideas for resolutions that I think are really good health resolutions to do this year. 
losing weight is an awesome resolution because it is authentic. Now, I can teach you lots of pieces of how, you know, it's not about losing weight, it's about releasing weight or letting go of water weight or losing fat or eating healthy or getting healthier or blah, 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 blah. But if that's really, really um, authentic for you, that you want to lose weight and in your mind you know that what that means, it means being healthier and losing fat or firming up or getting a tight body, then that's fine. Having a resolution of losing weight, having a specific amount of pounds that you want to lose to get you down to your healthy weight is a great resolution as long as it follows what I'm telling you to do. So I'm going to show you how you would do that for weight loss. Another resolution that would be really good is getting off of medication or reducing your of medication and really reducing the, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Reducing the dependence that you have on chemicals could really be what it is. Another resolution that would be good would be to reverse illness or to prevent illness. If cancer runs in your family or you have cancer, reversing cancer is completely possible. And it's something that would be an amazing resolution this year. Um, there's a lady that I do know from one of the, the Facebook groups that I'm a part of who has seizures and is working on a year of se being seizure free. So these are really good health resolutions. Another one that would be really good would be um, not just eating healthier, but maybe having a you know, becoming a vegetarian, for example, because eating healthier is really vague, but becoming a vegetarian is a little less vague um, because it allows you to kind of center on what type of foods you're going to be eating. Um, reducing cravings is a good uh, resolution. Um, obviously, exercising more is one of the resolutions that people have, but I don't think that exercising more is as good as a resolution as it is a strategy for a bigger resolution. So if exercise is something that you want, having a fit bad body or six pack abs or losing a certain amount of inches would be the resolution and st the strategy would be exercising more. Um, oh, I almost forgot this one. I'm glad I wrote these down. Falling in love with your body and getting to know it better is another really good resolution. Okay, so after you have this resolution, what you wanna be looking at are what are the strategies that you would use to get there. So for losing weight, exercising more often would be a good one. Um, even for becoming a vegetarian, um, reducing dairy would be a good one. Um, obviously not eating meat, obviously. Um, even when it comes to eating healthier, you might wanna be specific as far as the strategy is like, not drinking coffee or um, reducing the processed foods that you eat. So you may think of one food that you eat really often that you want to stop eating. For example, um, chips, right, is a processed food full of fat, really doesn't give you that much nutrition. And so a strategy could be to stop eating chips. Um, there's lots of things you can do to help you on that journey. Uh, one, I put in a replacement recipe is to make kale chips. Buying kale chips is a really good idea, but they're pretty pricey, and uh, realistically, you'll probably never buy enough to really replace regular chips, but making kale chips is a really good idea. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, we have one of those um, box dehydrators, and I just bought a bag of kale, baby kale, from Costco, and did lemon and a little bit of olive oil and salt and dehydrated those and they taste amazing and I could eat the whole bag really quickly even though I didn't because you know it's it's a pretty dense food but really it kind of satisfied that crunchy that I was looking for and that salty that I was looking for so really what I want you guys to take away from this video is your health resolution only works if you have some strategy underneath it to tell you I always like to do side of one resolution um, per aspect of my life and then three strategies to get me there. Now the next piece to make sure that this actually works is of course to get support. If you have support around that specific strategy, then you are certain to actually accomplish that resolution. And support could come with a buddy, with a friend, it could come with a support group, either online or in person, and of course a coach. Um, that's like the job that I do is to make sure that I goal plan with my clients and that after I goal plan with my clients, we actually break down what steps we need to take because, you know, I have an idea in my head of a whole list of them. So I really want to 
find ones that are going to work with their lifestyles. But then to be able to give them that daily support, weekly support, to make sure that they are following through. So 2014, so excited. Pick a health resolution. I promise you that it will be different if you add that one piece of adding three strategies that you want to work on. If you decide on three strategies, you can decide to spend four months doing one strategy each until this whole year you'd actually accomplish all three strategies. So in this first quarter, one strategy you want to accomplish and really perfect. The second quarter, not quarters, um, well, there's not really a word for it, but every four months. And then the last one, what really putting that strategy into practice and perfecting it. This is my step-by-step -step guide on how to really make a good health resolution work for this year. I hope you have a wonderful week. Uh, look forward to next week where I'll be talking specifically about more about getting healthy and losing weight and not diet and exercise focused things because a lot of you, those are kind of touchy points for you, but there are lots of other options. So check out our video next week. Subscribe so you don't miss it. Uh, send me any of your questions either in the comments below or on my contact page and I will talk to you guys soon. Have a wonderful day. Bye!